بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم مائی ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آف فسٹ ایئر ای آئی ہوپ یو پیپل آر فائن اینڈ ہیونگ اے گڈ ٹائم ٹوڈے آئی ایم ہیئر سائما تنولی ود دا سیونٹین لیکچر فار سیوکس اینڈ وی ول بی کنٹینیوئنگ ود دا چیپٹر نمبر تھری دیٹ از دا اسٹیٹ ٹوڈے وی ول بی ڈوئنگ دا ٹو لاسٹ ٹاپکس دیٹ از آن پیج نمبر ففٹی ایٹ آف the welfare state now what is a uh, welfare state or we can say uh, rise of the welfare state the idea of the welfare state falahi mumlakat jise kehte hain is not new but its rebirth in the modern age can be ascribed to a number of causes that is breakdown of the laissez faire system in the 19th century gave rise to a new totalitarian system now what is this laissez faire that is the policy in which we follow that is uh, live and let live geo or gino do that that is the policy so it was basically uh, the breakdown of the laissez faire system in the 19th century which gave rise to a new totalitarian uh, society and totalitarian states of the past claimed only political authority while the totalitarian states which emerged in the 20th century or we can say the beginning of the 20th century exercised full control over the economic life of their citizens as well as their political life so we can say these totalitarian states they were not only controlling the economic uh, life of the individuals or the citizens but at the same time they were also dealing with the political life welfare state philosophy what a welfare state is and uh, that can be uh, state is neither the ultimate virtue nor the ultimate vice so we can say that state is neither the ultimate virtue as the collectivist maintain not the ultimate vice or a necessary evil as the individualist believe this is something in between those two things the collect uh, the collectivist they have this uh, thinking that it is the ultimate virtue that it is the ultimate end of the state uh, that uh, we have this uh, welfare state uh, that is Uh, from where uh, the individual is able to be having everything but at the same time according to the individualist they considered it as a ultimate vice or the necessary evil but in case of a welfare state welfare state basically is uh, the state which provides the basic needs of the individual without any condition the only condition is to be a citizen of a particular state other than that the welfare state will be providing benefits to the individual unconditionally but in return they have to be a uh, loyal to their state they will be participating in the nation building um, um, uh, uh, ways and all those all, all those state is neither identical with society nor with government now what is that that uh, state is neither identical with society nor with government its sphere does not embrace or encompass the whole of human life the state should restrict itself to the maintenance of law and order administration of justice defending her land and doing limited economic planning functions to be performed by all states at all times and for all intents and purposes cannot be stipulated precisely Uh, this is uh, a, f- a a kind of a uh, thinking that what kind of or we can say that uh, this is a kind of a theory in which it is said that state should not be interfering in the personal uh, life of the individual they are only to maintain law and order and administration of justice and all that but again uh, state is Uh, identical with st- society and government we cannot say that it is apart it is together and it is in uh, in its wholesome or completeness aapki jo state hai wo uh, sirf society se hi deal nahi karegi wo government ke sath bhi hai wo society mein citizens ki bhi requirements ko dekhegi aur unki bhi zaruriyat ko pura karegi every state is called to perform certain functions 
that is uh, which they uh, which vary with degree of social and economic development of its people and a variety of other factors so it is the duty of every welfare state to perform certain functions especially uh, in the social and the economic setup and uh, it is also as we have stated earlier uh, that uh, welfare state deals with the economic and the political and social aspect of the individual also it is not only dealing with the political uh, economics aspect it is also dealing with the political and social aspect next is state is not an end in itself it is according to the collectivists they believe that uh, uh, state is the ultimate end and it is an an end in itself uh, it is uh, or it works for the achievement of the higher objectives that is the progress uplift happiness and welfare of its citizens but at the same time we can say that state is there forever as long as the last person uh, is alive in a state state will be there providing uh, that individual all its uh, rights and all its uh, benefits so we cannot say that state is an end in itself according to the collectivist it is something that is there forever next uh, the state can achieve its objective by a careful balancing of collective and individual interest now what that will be it works for the achievement of a higher objective that is uh, the progress uplift and uh, happiness and welfare of the citizens again aapki jo uh, state hai uh, wo uh, uh, progress or uplift ke liye uh, kaam karegi individuals ki aur at the same time it will be working balancing the collective and the individual interest jisme group activity bhi hogi aur individually bhi infradi taur pe bhi jo citizens honge unki jo bhi uh, unki jo bhi objectives honge unko achieve karne mein help out karegi then we have the next point that is a uh, province of the state activity has to be carefully demarcated that is uh, there are certain things which the state has to do defend her boundaries apni sarhadon ki hifazat karna main law and order within the state uh, police function ho jayega organization of community life by creating an administrative and judicial setup jisme intizamiya bhi hai और अदलिया भी है टैक्सेशन एंड फंड रेजिंग फॉर रनिंग द एसेंशियल एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव सेटअप्स और इन इस इंतजामिया को चलाने के लिए फंड रेजिंग भी है क्वाइनिंग ऑफ करेंसी एंड रेगुलेटिंग ऑफ मॉनिटरी सिस्टम डेवलपमेंट एंड मैनेजमेंट ऑफ द मेजर एजेंसीज ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्टेशन एंड कम्युनिकेशन सो दीज आर द प्रोवेंशियल एट द प्रोवेंशियल लेवल एज वी हैव स्टडीड इन इन जो पार्क स्टडीज यू मस्ट हैव स्टडीड द डिफरेंट concurrent and the federal list of duties that is to be performed by the central government and the provinces so these are the certain functions of the state jisme aapke law and order ko maintain karna hai through the police uh, apne uh, sarhadon ki hifazat hai fir community uh, mein jo administration uh, administration hai intizamiya hai adliya hai uski working ko dekhna ab uh, tax pay karna for better administration setup aur uh, currency और मनी रेगुलेटिंग सिस्टम लेके चलना पॉलिसीज लानी प्रोवेंशियल लेवल पे भी ये सब आ जाती हैं आपकी मोस्टली कंकरेंट लिस्ट में देन वी हैव रेगुलेटरी फंक्शंस नाउ व्हाट आर दे देयर आर फंक्शंस व्हिच कैन क्लासिफाई अंडर अ जनरल कैटेगरी ऑफ रेगुलेटरी फंक्शंस दीज आर द फंक्शंस विच द स्टेट डज नॉट इट्स परफॉर्म थ्रू इट्स फंक्शनरीज शी ओनली डायरेक्ट्स शी दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द स्टेट and regulates them that is working conditions in the factories licensing of certain trades place uh, places of entertainment and public houses regulation of copyright trademarks patents joint stock companies banks uh, insurance companies contract partnerships and uh, and uh, bankruptcy etc these are the certain regulatory functions jo aapki state khud nahi karti वो खुद ये फंक्शंस परफॉर्म नहीं करती मगर उसके जो सबॉर्डिनेट ऑफिस हैं वहाँ पर वो डायरेक्ट करती है और रेगुलेट करती है कि वर्किंग कंडीशंस फैक्ट्रीज़ में क्या होंगी क्या टाइमिंग्स होंगे जो मुख्तलिफ़ फैक्ट्रीज़ होंगी जो सन्नतें होंगी उनमें 
लेबर का टाइम पीरियड क्या है काम का आ, उसके अलावा लाइसेंसेस जो दिए जाते हैं ट्रेड्स के लिए तजारत के लिए प्लेसेस ऑफ एंटरटेनमेंट एंड पब्लिक हाउसेस कहाँ पे होंगे रेजिडेंशियल एरियाज के पास कहाँ और कैसे बनाए जाएंगे रेगुलेशन ऑफ कॉपीराइट ट्रेड मार्क्स इस तरह बहुत सारी कॉपीराइट आपका लीगल एक टर्म होती है यूज टू डिस्क्राइब द राइट डेट क्रिएटर्स हैव ओवर अदर लिटरेरी वर्क यानी आपके कोई आपने कोई लिटरेरी काम किया है कोई अदबी काम किया उस पर आपका कॉपीराइट है लीगल राइट है तो ये सारी चीज़ें जो हैं आपकी स्टेट जो है वो खुद नहीं करती मगर उसकी अदर जो सबॉर्डिनेट ऑफिस और ब्रांचेस हैं वो ये काम करती हैं लाइक पेटेंट जॉइंट्स हैं स्टॉक कंपनीज हैं बैंक्स हैं इंश्योरेंस कंपनीज हैं जहाँ पे लोगों को इंश्योरेंस मिलती है लाइफ का बीमा होता है कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स होते हैं पार्टनरशिप है और ऐसी बहुत सारी चीज़ें सो दीज आर द रेगुलेटरी फंक्शंस वी हैव द ऑप्शनल फंक्शंस देर आर सर्टन फंक्शंस विच द स्टेट कैन डिसाइड टू टेक अप फॉर हर और टू लीव फॉर द प्राइवेट एंटरप्राइज टू परफॉर्म या तो स्टेट खुद ये फंक्शंस कर देगी और ले लेगी ऑप्शनल फंक्शंस हैं जैसे नेम सजेस्ट कर रहा है ऑप्शनल इट इज़ अकॉर्डिंग टू देयर विश आइदर द स्टेट विल बी ऑप्टिंग फॉर दीज फंक्शनल फंक्शंस और एनी प्राइवेट एंटरप्राइज जो है वो उसको परफॉर्म करेगी दिस कैटेगरी ऑफ फंक्शन इज आइडेंटिफाइड एज ऑप्शनल फंक्शंस और इसमें बहुत सारी चीज़ें आ जाती हैं दैट इज ट्रेड रेगुलेशन थ्रू प्राइस कंट्रोल और कंज्यूम फ्रेंडली मेजर्स लाइक रेशनिंग प्रिवेंशन ऑफ कार्टेल और ट्रस्ट यानी कार्टेल होता है एन एसोसिएशन ऑफ मैनुफेक्चरर्स और सप्लायर्स विद द पर्पज ऑफ मेनटेनिंग प्राइस एट अ हाई लेवल और रिस्ट्रिक्टिंग कम्पटिशन तो आपकी बहुत सारी जो ट्रेड पर्पजेस के लिए आ, लोग आ, अपनी प्राइसेस को हाई रखते हैं अपना एक स्टैंडर्ड मेंटेन करने के लिए उसके लिए ये सर्टन ऑप्शनल ड्यूटीज़ हैं और ऑप्शनल फंक्शंस हैं या तो गवर्नमेंट खुद कर लेगी या कोई फिर एंटरप्राइजेज uh, इसको परफॉर्म करेंगे देन वी हैव डायरेक्टिंग ट्रेड इनटू सर्टेन चैनल्स बाय गिविंग इंसेंटिवस टू सर्टन फील्ड एंड पुटिंग एम्बारगोज इन द अदर अगेन कुछ जगह पर ट्रेड्स में Uh, लोगों को इंसेंटिवस दिए जाते हैं वेन दे आर परफॉर्मिंग वेल और इंसेंटिव ये होता है कि उनको किसी किस्म का रिवॉर्ड और कोई बेनिफिट uh, दिया जाता है कोई बोनस दिया जाता है इन दैट केस सो दैट दे कैन इम्प्रूव देयर स्टैंडर्ड ऑफ ट्रेड मोर और उसको अच्छा कर लें ठीक है देन वी हैव द नेक्स्ट वन दैट इज कंजर्वेशन ऑफ ह्यूमन कैपिटल नाउ वट विल दैट बी मैंने आपको बताया था कि हमारे यहाँ रिसोर्स दो तरह की होती है एक नेचुरल रिसोर्स और एक ह्यूमन रिसोर्स ह्यूमन रिसोर्स या ह्यूमन कैपिटल आपकी पॉपुलेशन होती है इफ द पॉपुलेशन इज क्वालिफाइड दे आर स्किल्ड दे विल बी अ काइंड ऑफ अ ब्लेसिंग फॉर द नेशन बट इफ द पॉपुलेशन इज अनकालीफाइड अनस्किल्ड वो एक लाइबिलिटी बन जाएगी तो हमारे यहाँ जो बहुत ज़रूरी है दैट इज़ Uh, uh, the business of the state is not confined only to the conservation and development of economic resources it is also it includes the con- uh, conservation and development of hu- of human cap- uh, capabilities education is the foremost of these functions no agency other than government can undertake obligation universal in character and secure popular education what state should do for popular education it should also for the same reason do for the general promotion of cultural life hamare yahan jo conservation of uh, resources hoti hai jisme hum koshish karte hain ki hamare paas jo bhi economic resources hain unko hum preserve kare unko save kare like electricity uh, petroleum gas and everything but at the same time there should be अ कंजर्वेशन ऑफ ह्यूमन कैपिटल हमारी जो पॉपुलेशन है उसको एजुकेट करना उनको स्किल्ड और क्वालिफाइड करना अगेन ये स्टेट की ड्यूटी है एंड इफ वी हैव क्वालिफाइड एजुकेटेड पीपल अगेन मैंने बताया दैट विल बी अ काइंड ऑफ अ ब्लेसिंग फॉर द नेशन देन नेक्स्ट पॉइंट इज लेजिस फेयर स्टेट लेजिस फेयर स्टेट मैंने पहले भी बताया जिसमें वी हैव दिस पॉलिसी ऑफ लिव एंड लेट लिव द लेजिस फेयर स्टेट स्टूड for strengthening the individual at the cost of the state but it failed to achieve 
desired results individual and the state both were the losers only a small small class of the cunning exploiters फ्लॉरिस्ट अब क्या होता था कि लेजिस फेयर स्टेट में जो स्ट्रेटजी थी उसमें और आपके जो इंडिविजुअल्स थे दे वर टू बी स्ट्रेंथन उनको स्ट्रॉन्ग किया जाता था इकनॉमिकली सोशली पोलिटिकली बट एट द एंड क्या होता था कि एज दे वर गोइंग नॉट इन फेवर ऑफ द स्टेट इट एवरी थिंग वॉज गोइंग अगेंस्ट द स्टेट तो इन द एंड बोथ द इंडिविजुअल एंड द स्टेट वर एट द लूजिंग एंड जिसके लिए ज़रूरी था और इसके इसमें कुछ एक ख़ास क्लास थी लोगों की एक्सप्लाइटर्स की जो फ़ायदा उठा जाते थे जो बेनिफिशल रहते थे इन इकॉनमी एंड एवरी थिंग सो इट वॉज नॉट ऑफ मच सक्सेस दिस सिस्टम ऑफ लेजिस फेयर दैट इज़ द रीज़न दैट वी कैन से द वेलफेयर स्टेट्स लाइक यूनाइट किंगडम फॉर एग्जाम्पल नेशनलाइज एंड सोशलाइज few selected industries like the coal mines railways transport central banking telecommunication aviation gas electricity a bulk of national economy was left to be run by the private uh, section to so, isse government ne uh, especially welfare states like england aapko pata hai ki england jo hai it's a welfare state fawai falahi mamlakat hai jo apne logon ko if their people are Uh, uh not employed and they are having uh, facing any kind of crisis they provide them food uh, three times a meal and medical facilities as long as they are not able to stand uh, again and uh, d- uh become economically independent wo apne logon ko facilitate karti hai to isi mein unhone apni jo factories thi kuch usme se bahut sari nationalized aur socialized kar di thi magar at the same time उन्होंने बहुत सारी अपने प्राइवेट सेक्टर्स को भी बहुत सारी अपनी फैक्ट्रीज दे दी थी इस्पेशली वर्ल्ड वॉर वन और टू के बाद जब उनके यहाँ बहुत ज़्यादा इकनॉमिक क्राइसिस आए थे सो वी कैन से द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ वेलफेयर स्टेट्स लाइक ऑल अदर ह्यूमन आइडियाज एंड बिलीव हैज़ इट्स ओन शॉर्ट कमिंग्स एंड डिफेक्ट्स इट हैज़ बीन क्रिटिसाइज बिटरली बाई इट्स ओपोनेंट्स बट दिस क्रिटिसिजम शेल नॉट कैरी मच वेट Until and unless the critics are able to suggest a better alternative for it, welfare states have their own short shortcomings. Like everything has uh, a plus or a negative point. But at the end, we can say that जो आपकी welfare states हैं, इनका कोई हमारे पास अच्छा alternative भी नहीं है जिस पे हम चले जाएं. So uh, uh, welfare states are to be there. Uh, next topic and the last one for this chapter number थ्री is conceptual basis of state in Islam. हमारे यहाँ being a Muslim state, uh, what do we have uh, the concept about this uh, of uh, Islamic state? Islamic way of life is essentially different from the Western, and for the matter, all other well-known cultures and philosophies, though not necessarily antagonistic to any of them. In Islam state is not an end in itself it is a means of achieving higher spiritual and moral uh, ideals uh, that is we cannot say that the state is the ultimate end but we can say that it is a never ending process just like um, we have this education jo ki continuous hai isi tarah aapka state be there forever it is there forever and till the last person is there it will be there to facilitate him the highest ideal which islam seek to achieve is not an authoritarian state but a society based on total submission to allah almighty as the holy quran says i created the jinn and mankind only that they might worship me so this is what the state in islam is that we believe in total sub- subservience or total surrender to allah almighty not more than that there is Uh, no totalitarianism there is no absoluteness absoluteness only lies with allah first point we have is sovereignty of allah allah ki badshah according to islamic belief allah alone is the ruler and the sovereign power not only in the state but the whole of the universe the holy quran says his verily is all creation and commandment blessed to the lord of the worlds so there uh, he is the master of the universe he is omnipotent he is omnipresent he is everywhere and he is to be worshiped second is khilafat that is caliphate 
the holy quran has proclaimed the vicegerency of man saying and when thy lord said unto angels lo listen i am about to place a vicegerent khalifa in the earth so this is what khilafat is concept of a divine sovereign gives rise rise to many practical questions in human mind allah is beyond human perception how his sovereign is to materialize into political tools and instruments of governmental authority so this is what khilafat is that god sent this person or we have this cho- uh, a chosen member uh, amongst us who is the khalifa and we can uh, can say that he is the khalifatul muslimin and at the same time he is only a uh, interpreter or a vicegerent of allah or a messenger of allah uh, uh, to which we have to obey him for this reason then we have the third point that is accountability what is that that is khalifa tul muslimin or the head of the an islamic state is made to work under a system of dual responsibility dual means double as a muslim person he is accountable to allah almighty and all other muslims are at the same time dual means he is not only accountable to allah almighty but to the public to the muslims as well as a vicegerent or a deputy of the citizens he is accountable to all of them for all his deeds uh, that deeds that is what makes him having a dual responsibility double responsibility ke wo allah ke samne bhi jawab de hain aur apni riaya ke samne bhi apni awam ke samne bhi next is theocracy divided defied now what is this the idea of a religious government haunts the mind of citizens or civilized man in the west like a nightmare the west knows about only one form of religious government that is democracy government of the people theocracy is a system europe has been subjected to for centuries theocracy literally means the rule of god theo means god and crazy means rule so this is the rule of the god but uh, as the christians have been following this system uh, in the origin of the state theories we have studied but that makes it very difficult as uh, there were a lot of exploitation in this kind of uh, we can say uh, rule islamic belief in the finality of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam served a death blow to theocracy humne jab being a muslim khatm e nubuwwat par yakeen samne laya to theocracy jo thi that came to an end muslim hold that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam was the last human person who could claim direct communion with god islam as it is said holy quran and in sunna is the last final and the complete message of allah so we can say that uh, all members of the public and private life will now be guided by the eternal principle derived from these two fundamental sources that is uh, la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah there is only one god and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam is his last uh, uh, messenger or last prophet any person claiming to be the recipient of divine guidance and claiming for him the status of a law maker shall be dealt with an imposter or a liar a liar a liar or we can say we don't believe other than that hamare jo akhri nabi hain un pe khatm e nubuwwat aa chuki hai aur koi insaan agar claim kare aisi cheez ka to he will be only a imposter or a uh, we can say liar next is the, uh, that is democracy rule of the people demo means people crazy means rule uh, so uh, democracy simply means a government which is run with the consent of the common man islam wants to establish a state based on the higher standards of morality and human well being but these high standards are not to be achieved through coercive measures in democracy we believe in the consent with the willingness in the wish and will of the people not more than that there is no uh, means of coerciveness or forceful measures zabardasti kahi nahi hai only uh, 
रजामंदी से लोगों की मर्जी से सब कुछ किया जाता है नेक्स्ट इज कंसल्टेशन दैट इज श्योर अप इस्लामिक कंडक्ट ऑफ स्टेट इज बेस्ड अपॉन कंसल्टेशन कंसल्टेशन दैट इज थ्रू टेबल टॉक डिबेट एंड डिस्कशन अल्लाह हैज एंजॉइंड ऑन द हेड ऑफ एन इस्लामिक स्टेट टू कंसल्ट विद हिज कम्पेनियन एंड द कम्यूनिटी ऑफ मुस्लिम और मुसलमान अकुरानिक वर्स एड्रेस द होली प्रॉफिट सल्लाम इन दीज वर्ड्स एंड कंसल्ट विद दैम अपॉन द कंडक्ट ऑफ अफेयर्स दैट इज कंसल्ट विद दैम विद होम दैट इज द पीपल प्रॉफिट मोहम्मद सल्लाम कंसल्टेड हिज कम्पेनियंस इन ऑल मैटर्स पोलिटिकल और अदर his successors the pious caliph followed his example faithfully so this is what consultation is that is we being muslims we should be rational we should be logical we should be thinking as man is a thinking animal we should be uh, doing making decisions or doing certain things with debate and discussion through consultation through table talks not through uh a uh, emotional frenzy or through forceful measures next point is that is obedience to the ruler that is quran says o g means you who believe obey allah and obey the messenger and those amongst you are in authority this is what the quran says that is we are supposed to follow and obey our ruler ulul am is the arabic equivalent for the ruler or the one who is in a position to command quran has qualified the ruler or the one to whom allegiance is to be rendered by saying from amongst yourself it means that only a democratically elected ruler has a right to claim allegiance that is loyalty from the community of muslim and no one else so this is what our ruler is who is chosen from amongst us and we are supposed to follow him because he is the chosen one he is the selected one in the last point we have good governance that is your achhi hukmrani falahi mamlakat mein achhi hukmrani hi hogi how it happens that is we have the rule of law which is there and which is equal or uh, just for all sabke liye ek jaisa kanoon equal status for all citizens in the eyes of law again it doesn't matter that whosoever will be the citizen of the state of islamic republic of pakistan he will be justly dealt uske sath insaaf hoga uh, equality ke sath safeguard of all fundamental rights and liberties whosoever will be the citizen of a welfare state of islamic republic of pakistan he will be enjoying all fundamental rights and liberties poverty elevation and welf- welfare of the citizens humne ghurbat ko khatam karna hai aur logon ki falah karni hai administration of justice without favor or prejudices that is aapka uh, in- insaaf hoga kisi qisam ke favor किसी किस्म के तफरके के बगैर एलिमिनेशन ऑफ वाइसिस हर तरह की बुराई को ख़त्म किया जाएगा वाइसिस आर द बैड डीड्स प्रमोशन ऑफ वर्चूज दैट इज़ द गुड डीड्स अच्छाई को सामने लाया जाएगा फ्री एंड कंपलसरी एजुकेशन फॉर ऑल दैट इज़ द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग टू बी इकनॉमिकली इंडिपेंडेंट एंड टू बी एट पार विद द अदर कॉमिटी ऑफ नेशंस मेंटेनेंस ऑफ लॉ एंड ऑर्डर अगेन जस्टिस फॉर ऑल egalitarian society provision of equal civil rights for the non muslim citizens hum ek musliman mamlakat hote hue apne non muslims ko bhi har tarah se equal rights aur unke civil rights provide karenge achievement of the higher spiritual objectives and moral uplift of the citizens logon ki character building hogi to automatically we will be having a uh, developed welfare nation so This is all for today and with this we come to an end of your chapter number 3 inshallah in my next uh, lecture which will be the last one and inshallah after that we will have our colleges reopened by 15th uh, i will be uh, completing the exercise with you uh, f- thought for the day is 
do not face the day until you have faced God in prayer. So remember this and have a nice day.